What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jacob Potato, and the big news of today, Thursday the 20th of June, is that Microsoft have backpedaled on their DRM and their use game policies. As many people have started to do... That was a slow clap, by the way, if you, if you couldn't get that over the mic. Like, who saw this coming? I think everybody in the world saw this coming. Microsoft noticed the PlayStation is beating them quite badly and they decided just to backpedal and go back against everything that it's been saying. Oh, you don't like DRM? Deal with it. Get an Xbox 360 if you don't want to play the Xbox One. If you can't play the Xbox One offline, get a 360. And everyone's praising Microsoft as heroes now because they decided to go against their ways and their beliefs and actually stand up for the gamer and their consumers. Wrong! Microsoft has not stood up for anybody but its own self. The only reason why it's actually backpedaled is because of the influence of money. Or the lack of money, really. They notice the PlayStation are doing better than them. They notice that they have lost this console war, so they're backpedaling against everything that they said at the start. Deal with it, don't care, and they just want to make more money. They're, they're not doing this for us, as they stated in their announcement. They don't care about their gamers, they don't care, obviously. The fact that they were going to do this in the first place shows that they don't care. The fact that Sony went against Microsoft to do all this in the first place shows that they don't really care either, they just want to beat the competition. Nothing was done for us, please get this notion out of your head if you have it in your head at the minute. This was not done for us. Microsoft are doing this to line their own pockets and to make sure that they actually have some footing in this new generation. Even though they are doing this, please do not forget about the whole Kinect thing is always watching you. Do not stoop to the level now that they've just decided to go backwards on everything and say, look, this is what we're doing now because we care about you. Whereas in the background, they're rubbing their hands together going, hmm, <laughs> this is great, we're going to get them back to us now. That is not the thing. They don't care. They just want to line their pockets. They realise that they had done something stupid and they weren't going to make any money off it, so they said, look, we care about you guys. Well, they don't. I'm not saying that Sony cares any more about us either. They don't give a flip about us, to be honest, either. Again, it's everything just to line their own pockets. But as a gamer, we have to think, are they going to do this again? The fact that they wanted to do this in the first place does not mean in any minute that they are not going to throw all this crap on us a year down the line. I kind of wish they didn't do this. Because then my idea was set in my head which console that I was going to get. I also was going to buy the PS4. Because it was just going to save me a lot more money down the line and you're getting a lot more for it. I recently bought The Last of Us and also bought a three month subscription to PSN just because. On PSN at the minute you get Uncharted, the single player only, I kinda wish you got the multiplayer as well. You got Uncharted, Demon Souls, Catherine, Little Big Planet Carding, Ico, Shadow of the Colossus H Edition, Kingdoms of Amalur, and a pile of PS Vita games. I paid £11. And the fact that Catherine on PSN at the minute's 50, a bit overpriced, yes, but like, come on. What does Xbox give us? A good online experience. Yes, I will stand behind that fact until the day I die. But as a gamer, they're not doing much. Yes, they removed all this crap from their console to make it a wee bit more viable. But they still have to use the Kinect feature. They still have all these, from a UK perspective anyway, have all these useless TV and media features that when you really think about it, the only one people have actually used on their Xbox is Netflix and Love Film. Nobody ever used YouTube on their Xbox, no one ever used the other apps really. So why would they include all these other stupid features again is beyond me. But they've obviously done it. And the problem is all these stupid features will not be available, half of them probably won't be available in the UK until at least a year and a half later because that's when they all came out once they were announced the first time after they integrated with Sky which is our satellite TV service. When I really think about it, over the last six or seven years I've had a great experience on the Xbox. The online experience has been phenomenal. The people I've met, the people I've played with have been great. But on a single player and an exclusive side of it, the PlayStation's done a lot better. So what you really want to think about is, from this console war, is when you're buying your next console, what do you want from your console? On the Xbox side of it, you have all the first party games and all the AAA games will be coming out for the Xbox because exclusivity is going out the window. Most games are coming out for both systems now. Kingdom Hearts and Metal Gear Solid, which were standing pillars on top of the PlayStation system 
are now multi-platform because game developers realize that it's pointless doing exclusive games because regardless of what money either company would give them to line their pockets with, the amount of sales that they would get and the amount of money off the sales would be much better across the two platforms and people are starting to realize this. So if you want a great multiplayer, I would probably stick with the Xbox because Xbox can do it right. You're paying an extra £100 though, and you also have this stupid Kinect functionality. You have to have the Kinect looking at you, you have to have the Kinect always on, which is a pile of stupid dung, because it's not needed. It's the exact same as the DRM stuff. I can't wait to see Angry Joe's video on this stuff, let alone Jim Sterling. His videos are great. Go check out Jim Sterling on The Escapist, I, The Escapist magazine. He is just phenomenal with the topics that he discusses. Then Angry Joe's rants are just funny. And if you want a good single player experience, experience and good exclusive games, to be honest, I would stick with the PlayStation. The PlayStation does do online, yes, and from The Last of Us it does good online. The Last of Us is a brilliant multiplayer. Go pick up The Last of Us because its multiplayer is just brilliant. But that's really it. You have to think what you want from your console. If you want a console that does online and does stupid media featurettes and everything and is willing to backpedal just to save its own skin rather than march on with its beliefs, then go with the Xbox. But if you want a company that has recently decided to turn most of its consoles into bricks but has still good exclusive games and can do multiplayer but not as well, then go with the PlayStation. But if you really want to come down to it, when you're picking your console, you'll have to go with what your friends are getting. I know with all my ranting and all my raving that I probably will still get the Xbox. It's hard to say, but with the YouTube side of things, YouTube is mainly controlled by Xbox. Commentators, really. Judgment, Pats, Butterbean, Kingdom, they're all Xbox guys. And if I ever want to get on playing with them, which I do, flashing sign, beacon, I want to play with you guys, then yeah, go with what everyone else is getting. It's a hundred pound more, yeah, but what's the point of playing multiplayer if you can't play with friends and actually have a properly enjoyable time? Which is always true, because you always have a much better time when you're playing on with your friends. But what you also shouldn't forget is that every game that everyone is getting so hyped about, like Battlefield 4, Titanfall, Black Ops, Ghosts, whatever you want to call it, they're all coming out for the Xbox. So in reality there is no real reason to be running off day one and buying these consoles. Because every good game that is supposed to be coming out for them is also coming out on the current generation. What would be the point, really, in spending £500, or, sorry, £450, i.e. $500, or £350, i.e. $400, to play games that you could just spend £40 on? Yes, they're going to be the same price, apparently, but to be honest, I think I can wait a while before I have to even consider buying them. Until there is a console exclusive that I am completely psyched about, then I don't see any point in buying the new consoles. I know because I'm a YouTube commentator that I should probably be keeping on top of everything. If I was a YouTube gaming commentator, then definitely yes, I would have to be constantly on top of the most recent topics, the most recent games, putting stuff out there all the time, i.e. Woody, Total Biscuit, The Nerd Cubed, whatever. Them guys are constantly spewing out stuff all the time, because that, that is what they do. They are gaming commentators, so they have to keep on top of the gaming scene. But I'm not. I am a Christian gaming commentator. In my title, Christian Comes First, that is what is the key point of my channel. I concentrate on the topics that I talk about. Yes, I can cover new games every so often. I would love to be doing a review of The Last of Us right now, but I don't have the component cable necessary to record off the PlayStation 3, so that's a bummer. So with that, the Christian side of it is more important. Yes, if the video in the background relates to the video, then yeah, sure, that's great, but one like this that doesn't really cover any specific gaming area, then I can just kind of put whatever I want over this, which I'm pretty sure is Geometry Wars, and the minute I'm thinking Geometry Wars. So gaming is not the key focus of this channel, the Christian side of it is, and so is the commentary. As long as I can keep putting out good commentary, I don't really care what games are on in the background, because I'll be playing whatever games I want at the end of the day. And if I want to buy a PS4, I'll buy a PS4 but I'm pretty sure I'll probably be going with the Xbox.
So anyway guys, that that is it. That is the last I am covering of this stupid console war. I'll probably cover a bit more of it later. I'm not going to do it for the next whatever months until the consoles come out. And I'll probably do another one whenever I decide to buy one. I don't know which one I'm getting at the moment. It all depends on about a multitude of millions of things. <sighs> But yeah, my name is Jagged Potato, guys. I am a Christian gamer. I'm going to change this up a bit now. I'm a Christian gamer, and I will see you all next time.